take a listen to this. You hear that? Nothing. It's time to fix that. For the longest time, my indie game has had no sound. To be honest, my history with sound design in my game jam games hasn't been great. This is an excellent game. For the most part, I just make sounds with my mouth because it's easy and funny. For a game jam, most people don't care too much. Then there's 8-bit sound design, which is more... <laughs> Nothing's wrong with that, but it's not exactly what I'm going for. Some people assume I'm going for a retro sound system since that's how my game is visually, but they would be wrong. I don't know why, I just really think that the game needs realistic and high quality sound effects in order to be effective. So basically I decided I wanted to take sound design into my own hands for this game, rather than stealing them from free sounds or something. Some people wonder why the game is taking so long. Uh, this is why. It's because I keep adding stuff to my plate. But I know it's great experience and something that I need to learn anyway. As far as music goes, my good friend Riptide is helping me out with that. I'm trying to make a few tracks, but I'm really bad at nailing specific vibes within my music, which Riptide is great at. You all should definitely go check out his devlogs as well if you're interested in pixel art games. They are very enjoyable. And I was in one of his videos a while ago. Fun stuff. As I've had a blast developing my game and adding stuff to it, I began to realize I'm getting really behind on sound effects. The task only got larger and more intimidating the longer I waited, so I finally decided to tackle it. To start, I did some research, also known as watching some YouTube videos, on how to make sound effects for an indie game. I found some good resources that helped me figure out how to start. Luckily for me, I make animations where I record a lot of voice lines and include sound effects, so I'm pretty familiar with Audacity. It's what I decided to go with for making sound effects. The first step for me to start making them was to get some raw audio files. Look at that man. What is he doing? Why is he picking up leaves on his college campus? Believe it or not, that's me. I realized the main character of my game is, well, a leaf, so I decided that to start making sound effects for the main character I would need some leaves. Luckily when I had this realization it was the end of fall so there were plenty of succulent crunchy leaves for me to use just lying on the ground. I went and collected them into a cup and then I set myself up with audacity and my microphone and I started the art of sound design. After creating a very strange audio file with leaf sounds, I procrastinated for two weeks before finally starting work on making some sound effects. Needless to say, it was not as easy as Jonas Tyrola made it seem. Why, Jonas? I then gave up and procrastinated for another week. After coming to my senses, I gave it another go. I tried using a bit less stuff, and I actually ended up with some decent footstep sound effects. The only problem I was running into was that the footstep sounds would repeat themselves, and it kind of sounded like the Minecraft footstep sounds. Now, I realized that this was actually something of a recurring problem in my game. The question was, how can I make a random choose function that won't repeat the same thing twice? And how can I do that without making my code a cluttered mess? It's time for a side quest! I started by looking up some stuff. I started looking into permutation tables and the advanced random feature in Construct 3. I eventually found myself learning JavaScript for Construct 3, which was a good time, but I was really off track. I decided to make a community post asking if anyone had any good ideas. Some kind fellow suggested trying a while loop. I've never really used them, so I started another detour trying to figure out how the while loops work in Construct 3. My friend Adam is a computer science major, and I started talking to him about the stuff I was doing. With the help of Adam and some strangers on the internet, I got this. It's admittedly not nearly as clean as I would have liked, but it works. For now, that's good enough for me. Hopefully I can find a better way to do it so that things like this aren't so annoying in the future. My next task was the jump, land, and cling onto wall sound effects. They came together pretty nicely, which was helpful. I also did the take damage sound effect in the same sitting. I gotta say, adding reverb onto a sound makes it automatically sound way better. I'll definitely be doing that more. With some of the basic movement sound effects down, I decided to throw in some of Riptide's tracks to get the music sound effect balance down. It's a little wonky still, but I'm working through it. Finally though, I can sort of see what the game will sound like with music and sound. Obviously I still have a lot of sounds to add, but I love where it's going.
I've also been having a really fun time adding new abilities recently. I'm going for a more movement heavy game and I love adding new abilities that you'll be able to find as you explore. I just need to be careful that I don't get sidetracked and add a bunch of unnecessary movement options, which is a real danger. When I went home for the holidays, I took some time to find objects around the house and make some more sound files with them. I got a lot of stuff to work with. I made this really juicy punch sound effect by punching a wet rag and then doing some weird ding sounds with a glass and water. Basically what I've learned so far is that half of sound design is just walking around and hitting stuff and seeing what it sounds like. Obviously this was way easier to do at home because my dorm room doesn't have nearly as large of a selection of random items as a house does. After putting these sounds into the game, it's starting to really come together. Also while I was at home, I wanted to improve the water. It's just kind of lame. I really wanted to get a cool ripple effect and I delved into mesh distortion to try and figure it out for myself. Another side quest! This side quest is hard. I sort of understand how mesh distortion works, but I had no idea how I was going to make this into a smooth ripple effect with a variable wavelength. I found an asset on the construct marketplace that was exactly what I was going for. I ultimately determined that the amount of time it would take me to figure it out wasn't worth it, so I just got the asset. Yay, waves! I still intend to look a lot more into mesh distortion though, because you could do some really cool things with it. I turned the water into some cool variations and went through and updated all the code for swimming. I also got a lot of bug fixing done when I was at home too, which was really good. Anyways, I'm back at school now, and I thought I would update you all on my main goal for this semester. I started making sound effects mostly to work towards this. I'm gonna release a public demo that's actually well made and has sound and music. I know a lot of people have been waiting to play a demo ever since the first public demo that I made. The time is coming. But be patient, because it's probably going to take me a hot minute. If you want to stay updated, make sure to follow me on Twitter or join my Discord server. Both of the links are down below. As far as content goes, I've had a bunch of great new ideas recently that are really going to take the game to the next level. I also decided that I won't be doing any sort of heal spell like in Hollow Knight. I decided instead to simply add health pickups that drop sometimes from enemies, and there will also be chances to gain health in the environment to encourage exploration and fighting rather than staying in one spot and waiting for the spirit to recharge. I also have been messing around with the meditation mechanic that recharges your spirit twice as fast. I actually really like how it feels when I use it in a boss battle, and it just adds another layer to the combat. As you use your spells and abilities, you have to watch your spirit meter and then take some time to stop attacking and either dodge until the spirit meter recharges or find openings to stop and meditate really fast to recharge quicker. The mechanic itself is super fun, but I might need to change it visually because the fact that the player just sits down and starts meditating in the middle of a fight is a little bit weird. Or I might keep it, I don't know man. Let me know what you guys think. Also, now is a good time to mention that you should subscribe and turn on notifications because you don't want to miss out on the cool stuff I'm working on. Right? The other big thing I'm excited for is the status effect system. I realized I can make combat and boss fights way more interesting if you have a chance to be afflicted with poison or withering, but you can also prepare and get status effects of health generation, rage, etc. It's a really fun system so far, and once it's done, it should be super easy to call upon. Those are really the only gameplay changes I want to share. I try not to spoil most things. I love how as I've been working on my game, I've been able to improve new skills. When I started my pixel art, it was really bad, but I've definitely improved, though many of the backgrounds are definitely still lacking. Now I've had a chance to teach myself an entirely new skill and share my journey with you all. I hope you guys can take away some tips about how I learned sound design and try learning it yourself. It's pretty rewarding to hear all the sounds I've made in-game knowing that I punched a wet rag or tapped some metal things together to make it. Thanks everyone for watching. Like I said, the next devlog hopefully should come with a demo, but we'll see how things turn out. Thank you.